Show me the money. Show you the money. Oh, no, no, you can do better than that, Jerry. I want you to say it, but you wouldn't mean it, brother. Hey, I got Bob Sugar on the other line. I better hear you say it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Show you the money. Not, not show you. Show me the money. Show me the money. Yeah. Louder. Show me the money. I need to feel you, Jerry. Show me the money. Jerry, you better yell. Show me the money. Show me the money. All right, folks, welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. And uh, our next guest is the man that uh, legend has it. Um, they based Jerry Maguire on, and so we call him, uh, some call him the real Jerry Maguire, but I'll, I prefer to call him the real Lee Steinberg because uh, he's a legend uh, in his own right. And, uh, Lee, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, you are a veteran of our very first Super Bowl party, and... A week from Saturday, we're having our 26th. So yes, right here in, uh, in New York City. Yes, we're actually going to do a live hookup between the party and Afghanistan. So we'll be talking to troops there. And additionally, we've got, um, we're, we're helping Navy SEALs. So That's Super Bowl, great. big business, big politics, big sports, all wrapped up into one That place. is great. I, I can't think of anything better. And now you have a new book. I'm going to hold it up. It's called <laughs> The Agent, uh, My 40-Year Career Making Deals and Changing the Game. Uh, congratulations on that. But, you know, uh, people who, who know of you but haven't followed you from uh, – you know, from one point till, uh, from that point, maybe 18 years ago, when you, you know, I'm in the party and there's, well, there's Kenny O'Brien, there's Warren Moon, they're all walking around, and I'm like, wow. Um, and, and, I mean, you personally, professionally, uh, have reached rock bottom, uh, addiction, uh, the rehab, uh, divorce, uh, the business collapse, everything that could go wrong, and yet here you are sitting here planning the next Super Bowl party, have the book, back in business, have some top clients. I mean, uh, well, what kept you going, I guess, is the first question. Proportionality, a sense that I wasn't a starving peasant in Darfur. I didn't have the name uh, Steinberg in Nazi Germany. I uh, wasn't crippled. I didn't have infirmities. There's really no excuse. My dad had two core values, one, treasure relationships, especially family, and the second, make a difference in the world, help people who couldn't help themselves. So our athletes had set up charity programs at the high school, collegiate, and professional level. Scholarship funds, college repayments, work done, homes for the holidays being an example in a pro city where he has put 131 single mothers into the first homes that they'll ever own. And so after 60 first round draft picks and the very first pick in the first round eight years and uh, half the starting quarterbacks in the league in the league and, and baseball and basketball. Um, in the late 2000s, my father died a really horrible death of cancer. My two kids were diagnosed with a, with a serious eye disease. We lost homes to mold. And then I got divorced. And it felt like being Gulliver on the beach, yeah. tethered down, Lilliputians sticking forks in me. and. I finally got to the point in March of 2010 that I realized my drinking was out of control. So I gave younger agents my practice. I went into sober living, worked the 12 steps with a unique fellowship, and made the decision that if nothing else for the rest of my life, I'd be sober and I'd be a good father. Wow. And that was four years ago. And how old are your kids, by the way? My kids are 27, 22, and my youngest is a f 18 and a freshman at Michigan State. Wow, that's good. Does he play sports? Um, she doesn't, but she, okay. <laughs> she gets back there and they win 12 football games. Uh, they win the Rose Bowl. They have a top rated team. I said, somebody should sign her as a good luck charm. Right? I said, listen, my alma mater, Cal, went 1 on 11, so it won't always be like this, sweetie. Let me ask you, um, a great story, and it's all in the book, uh, folks, uh, so um, I don't want to gloss over it by any means because to me it's just, it's just amazing. I mean, I've been divorced. 
Uh, and I, you know, and, and I know how down you could get on yourself and know how, but your perspective is so healthy and so great. And if everybody could have that perspective, it would uh, end so much pain. Uh, always remember that there are people who are worse off than you, no matter what the situation is. And, and that is great. But I do want to talk a little bit about, uh, about the game and um, how is it, the, the athletes you represented back then compared to the athletes you're representing now. People always say, how has the game changed, whether they're talking about football, baseball, basketball. How has the athlete changed? Athletes today, remember, are brought up in the same environment as every other kid, which means that they're watching a big screen monitor in front of them, they're YouTubing, they're playing shooting games, they're tweeting, they're uh, texting. Uh, they almost have the sense they can control every moment of sensory input. And I think the patients uh, and attention span shorter because they get bursts of micro uh, content all the time. Um, having said that, the athletes are still the most self-disciplined, the most able to postpone current gratification uh, for the future. What's so different is their size. Oh my goodness. You have uh, a position like defensive end where like a Fred Dreyer could play it at 250, <laughs> um, th 300 today. Yeah. An offensive tackle, I mean, we have hundreds of players above 300 pounds. So the G-force has gone up. That's why the concussion problem is so big. An offensive lineman, last year at the Combine, ran a 4640. Wow. So that's like a truck yeah. that's out of control at 80 miles an hour. They never used to be so big no. and certainly not so fast. And that's part of the reason we have the concussion problem because that G-force is so much higher. I became concerned uh, back in the 80s that somehow my clients who got concussed, the Troy Aikman and Steve Young, were not getting answers from doctors as to how many were too many in the rest. So I held three concussion conferences, not much change. 2007, we held them again, and at that point, we had a, a neurologist who had done experiments tell us that three or more is the magic number, exponentially higher rate of Alzheimer's, ALS, and wow. it's not just football. I now believe that when an offensive lineman hits a defensive lineman at the inception of every play, it produces a low-level concussive event every time. Wow. So you could have an offensive lineman walking out of football with 10,000 sub-concussive hits, none of which had been diagnosed, right. the aggregate of which is much worse than uh, three knockout blows. Wow. We're talking to Lee Steinberg, uh, legendary sports agent. The book, The Agent, uh, by Lee Steinberg, is out now. Um, let me ask you, you've done a lot of work in... Um, in, in, in regulation, uh, to California specifically, uh, making sure steroids are kept away from kids in high school. You talk about the growth of the athletes. I mean, it goes to all sports. I was a Yankee fan growing up in the 70s and late 60s. I watch the, the, uh, the, uh, the channels now where they show the, the greatest games ever played. And you're watching these guys run around, and their uniforms look like they're skin tight because they have no muscles. They're all <laughs> bones. They're thin. All of them, they'll know their legs, the bodies. It's different now. How much of that is attributed to substance abuse of, of some sort? We were so repulsed by the changes that came to football players, mostly in the 80s. Um, they, they got huge through steroids, but their muscles were doughy, they had pimples on their head. Yeah. And the thing that I don't think the public knows is they go through emotional cycles because of the steroids, where half the time they're in roid rage, where they're aggressive, half the time they're depressed. And we actually had athletes coming off of that who killed themselves. So it's out of football largely. Uh, and in baseball, I can't stand the fact that people think it's okay to use steroids. It's cheating. It completely penalizes the people that are not uh, using them. How do you compare the stats? It's, they know it's illegal. And the message it sends to young kids who are athletes, they tell them to get bigger, stronger, and faster. And, and so they'll use anything. Or the weightlifting kids yeah. in high school. So yeah. 
steroids are not good for the human body. Yeah, pure or the, or the human mind. Quickly, let me ask you a couple of questions. Um, with regard to uh, the steroids and, and uh, A-Rod, um, what do you think of him suing the NFL Players Association and, and the reports of the conference call that followed uh, that suit where they wanted him kicked out, which they can't do, uh, but they, the, the reports are there were insinuations or outright if he comes back, we've got to make him afraid to come back. We've got to throw at him. We've got to make him sorry he ever did this. I mean, there's really no place for that either, is there? No, but I will tell you, if I were advising A-Rod, I would tell him, come clean, um, save the reputation you have. This will lead nowhere. No one believes him. And the truth of the matter is it's going to end up another Lance Armstrong. Yeah, and, well, uh, and tell folks about that. I mean, uh, that that he's going to uh, he's he's going to lose everything. I mean, he's going to lose everything he ever accomplished. Right. Uh, uh, let me let me ask you about uh, get back to uh, football real quick here. They're proposing to uh, uh, well, you know, as far as injuries go, they've basically done away with the kickoff return by moving the the ball up. There's hardly ever a return. I'm thinking that's going to be automatic soon. And now they want to do away with the extra point and make it that you get seven points for a touchdown. If you try for the extra uh, two-point conversion, you'll get the eight. But if you miss it, you'll get the six. Uh, so uh, do you, you favor doing away with uh, parts of the game in order to, uh, to, to, you know, to quell the, uh, the rash of injuries? The first part of the game I'd eliminate is the fact they review every play. Oh, I hate that. Oh, I hate it. So, now they're going to do it in baseball. You watch an NBA game, you sit there for 10 minutes. Oh, my God. It's, first of all, there's no certainty in the world anyway, even if you look at the film. It's not, this is not the Zapruder film on right, right. the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> Second of all, refs have always ref games and officials. Human and, element. And they make uh, mistakes right. and they even out. Oh, I'm so but glad to hear you say third that. Third of yeah. all, you have the most exciting play. The player breaks down the field. He scores a touchdown. You're filled with exultation. And then nothing. Uncertainty. It destroys the connection between excitement and plays and, and keeping the momentum of the game. It's just a, it's a killer. And it's trying to, to achieve something that is unachievable. Right, perfection uh, because we have technology and it's never perfection. One other thing, Richard Sherman, the rant that he went on after the game, he's since explained himself. But what would you think of what he did? I thought <sighs> that is not the role modeling I asked my players to do at the high school, collegiate, and professional level where I've had them set up scholarship funds. We've had them set up uh, a variety of, uh, of foundations like... Uh, uh, work done with 131 single mothers that he put into homes, Troy Aikman and uh, right, paying back clients, a scholarship. All your clients, so yeah. that's the thing. Big mistake how, on his how, part? No, yeah, no, 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 no. From a marketing standpoint, this is a Stanford grad who's very bright. This is the functional equivalent of Miley Cyrus twerking. This is, this is football twerking. Ah. And, <laughs> in other words, to a lot of people, it's obnoxious. But he's now on the radar. made himself yep. a household name. Now he'll come back here in New York next week, and he'll be the center of, of a lot of attention. Gotcha. And this is the premier marketing event that we have in America now. Lee, next I'm week. sorry. I'm sorry. The, the book, The Agent, Lee Steinberg, folks. Get it. Lee, a pleasure. Thank you so much on the Steve Malsberg Show, folks.